and the new king of Broadway, Daniel Day Kim. And check out these medical breakthroughs as we continue our Take Charge of Your Health Week. Don't forget to log on to kellyandmichaelnow.com to play, vote, and be part of today's show. Plus, Dancing with the Stars host Aaron Andrews joins Michael for the hour. All next on Live. And now, here are Michael Strahan and Aaron Andrews. Filling in for Kelly today is the one and the only Aaron Andrews, everybody. I am in a dress I cannot breathe in. And if I do breathe, you will see it. Good golly, that was a moment when I just went to sit down. It was like, please don't bust open. And, 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 and you're like, well, you look good. I, I gotta mean, say that. You but look let's great. just be honest, I will be sucking in until this show is over. And then, you know what? I, Last time I was here, we talked about high heels and how yeah. I feel like it's your, your, not your fault, but men's fault that women feel like they need to wear high heels <laughs> all the time. That, hold on. Why is that a man's fault? Because you guys are just into the long leg and all that look and the hot and the sexiness. I also find it your fault that we have to wear these dresses and suck in as well. <laughs> we as men will take you however you are. We just love you for your beautiful spirit. <laughs> My spirit yeah, at your all. Spirit if you, is if you see in. my spirit, because I took a breath. <laughs> oh, good morning. Boy. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? You had a good, um, you, you had a safe early. flight in, right? Good flight in. I did. I had a great flight in, and then um, got to the hotel really late, and thought I was going to go right to bed. But I'm going to tell a uh, what very... time did you go to sleep? <sighs> You guys have all been on airplane bathrooms, right? This is not going to be bathroom humor. Have you ladies ever, or men, ever looked in the mirror in a bathroom plane? That's wrong. It you is, can't do it. You're like... That's all I did last night when I got up, or went to bed as well, because I was looking in the mirror in the bathroom plane. I was like just wanting to make sure the mascara wasn't running, and then I was like, why hasn't anyone told me I have three blackheads on my nose like this? <laughs> and then yep. I realized I start squeezing and squeezing and squeezing and someone's knocking on the door and I'm that person that everyone thinks is doing that thing on the flight from Minnesota to New York. <laughs> so I walked out and then went to the hotel and continued to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. That's so why I hotels, went to bed kind of late. But those mirrors that have the lights around them that are like up close, they always leave those on in a yes. hotel, so when they go in there, it's like it's calling you, come to me. And I turn those do off Do you because, do those? No, I turn it off. I don't even look at it. I turn it off. I mean, I look how I look. Ain't nothing going to help me. I just am what I am. Those so I try not to do it. I never knew. And then, then I get mad. We have one backstage at Dancing with the Stars, so my makeup gal, Lisa Ashley, who you know, can mm -hmm. help me out. And it's not even the zits or the pores. It's I never even knew I had eyebrow hair where I had it. I was like, why hasn't anyone told me I'm walking around with a unibrow or a mustache? <laughs> <laughs> or the you three hairs coming out of look. my nose? That's why you can't yeah. look at those things. It's an obsession and it's gross. Well, I have a question. Do you have allergies? Yes, I do. And bad allergies? Post nasal drip. Um, you know, have they kicked in yet? Very attractive. Well, in California, you can always tell when the pollen is on uh -huh. the windows. Then I'm like, all right, I'm going to wake up with a sore throat. How come? Well, they say April showers are going to bring May flowers, yeah. and your allergies <laughs> are going to be worse than ever this year if you have awesome. allergies. And um, they say there are four, the doctor said, four things you can possibly do to help. Okay. First, see your allergist before you start sneezing, which it seems to be pretty standard. Two, which I think a lot of people probably don't do, ditch the pollen-ridden clothes as soon as possible. That's every outfit. Yeah, get rid of it. Not throw it away, wash it. I already I mean, have. Not, oh, I just bought this new blazer, let me burn it. No, no, no. You, you put it into a separate wash um, your bin. Don't hang it up back in your closet. Don't just throw it on the floor. Put it away. It's a lot of washing. Sometimes 30. I like to do the smell test. Can I get away with this shirt no. the next day? Yes, I can. <laughs> it's just fine. Turn it inside out. It's Fabrice, not the same Fabrice, shirt. Fabrice, Fabrice, Blow it off. A little cologne. <laughs> Thoroughly clean your face. 
about. That's and how, um, and when all else fails, this doctor said something we did yesterday here on the show, acupuncture. Oh, I love acupuncture. acupuncture. Might help you as an um, adjunctive, adjunctive treatment. I have a fifth tip. Maybe don't talk about it. Because I'm the kind of person, now that you mention this, I do feel stuff coming down really? my throat. And my nose is stuffy all of a sudden. So don't See, I don't get I don't have allergies, I don't think. You don't? No. What I about a, so. allergy to food or any Well, obviously, drugage? look how big I am. I can eat anything. <laughs> I, I just, I'm not allergic to food. I can walk. The pollen doesn't bother me. Nothing. Thank goodness. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I used to live in Florida growing up there, and you could always tell in Florida, anybody, I see a Georgia. Well, Georgia, same thing, Georgia fan. But you know in your car, I had a black car in Florida, and oh, it turns yeah. yellow? Yeah. That in love bug season. That's in February, right? When those beauties would hit your windshield, and then they were enjoying one Come another. On. And then they would hit your windshield, and one would still be alive, and it's like, I killed your lover. <laughs> <laughs> Awful news. And they're all front of your like That's hood really and all your lights <laughs> and then sometimes in elementary school I love how we went out in this one or I did you try to pull them apart that is just terrible that's rude well, <laughs> that is very rude they were having do a moment do not mess up a special moment between yeah. bugs hey speaking of special moment Queen Elizabeth's 90th birthday wow. today happy birthday What do you get her? What, she, what doesn't she have? She has everything. Yeah, she, she has, does. I mean, I can't imagine what she doesn't have. I think for a 90th birthday, hmm, I think it's very formal probably. I just get the feeling. I don't know what she, you would get her for a 90th. What's your go-to birthday gift for someone? Like, not like like me, you know, very close friend, but like someone you're like, all right, I got to go to a gift. Like, go-to gift to go to a party or like a dinner situation. Is there, I mean... I go through the gifts that somebody else gave me that I didn't want. I agree. And No, no, seriously, what do I do? It depends on who it is. Certain people you can kind of get a feel. Yeah. But... I, flowers, you can never go wrong with no. flowers. I think flowers are very important. But the Wine. one thing I get most of, and I think it's very important, alcohol. <laughs> I Cheers. Get, I mean, I get so much alcohol, I'm like, people must think I'm an alcoholic. Yeah, we do. I we have do. more tequila than I know what to do with. Yeah. And I'm like, if I drank all that tequila, I'm not alive. I'm, I'm dying. It's so much tequila. <laughs> to the point where I do re-gift the tequila. You do not. I can't drink it all, might as well I share I actually it. know for a fact I gave you a bottle of tequila a couple of years ago for your birthday. I didn't give it back to you. Uh, well, of course you didn't. Okay, um, good. Somebody else got your tequila, but I, it went somewhere. No, I may have drank it. If it were a good bottle, I kept it. Well, my boyfriend paid for it, so I, I kept hope it. It was. it was a good bottle um, then. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Alcohol, I feel like, is always easy, breezy gift. Um, what is yours? Same, or I we have a girlfriend, Sam, who comes up yep. with the best gift. So Sam I always try awesome to be like, if I were you, what would I give someone? And she's like, okay, let me just do it for you. But yeah, that. I thought she gave me a great idea, actually. My girlfriend, Chrissy Teigen, um, mm -hmm. I just went to her baby shower a couple weeks ago. She has everything. What do you give the gal that has everything? And Sam suggested a great bag that she would use with, you know, baby legend across of it. And tons of the classics, baby books. How good is that? And since I'm so maternal, I was looking through the nursery or uh, this bookstore at all the nursery rhymes and all the books, and I was like, my mom never read this to me. <laughs> How come I never got this? Apparently, this is a classic. But that is good for babies. I, yeah, for I babies, I always send monogram stuff. But what and if you I don't know what they're having? I'm, well, you know, I wait till they have it. Oh, you're a late I do, giver. I'm not a late giver. I'm just waiting till they have it because a lot of people now don't want to tell you what it is. And they're like, oh, it's going to be a surprise. I'm like, well, you know, you were surprised when you found out you were pregnant. That's enough. <laughs> Let's move on. Help me out here. Yeah. Help me. I'm not into the old guessing game. Just tell me what's going on. I have a problem giving you a gift anyways. Yeah, Help I'm not into here. that. But you are you into um, old TV shows? It kind of depends. Like, how old do they have to well, be? Like, like, like one. This is one that I loved growing up. Three's Company. Yes. Everybody remember Three's Company? Yeah. And Suzanne Summers did Dancing with the Stars, so I was so oh, excited right. for her. Yeah, yeah. her thighs it was, looked um, amazing. Joyce DeWitt, John Ritter, and Suzanne Summers yep. were the original um, Janet, Jack, and Chrissy on Three's Company, mm -hmm. and now they're talking about bringing it back. Which would be awesome. So here's the thing. If they bring they it back, they definitely have to say someone's dating. Because there's no way they're all living together and someone's not hooking well, up. Well, this is the thing. They're talking about making a movie out of it because in the original one, 
he had to act as if he were gay so he could live with the two ladies. That was the premise of the show, which now we look at back in 1977, I think it started. Yeah, he had to act as if he were gay so that he could, it would be acceptable for him to live with two females. But nowadays, you would look and go, what the heck world is wrong with that? Now, yeah. now you have these, you know, whatever. But I think they're going to put a modern twist on it. But, you know, you think about 21 Jump Street, they did um, The Man from Uncle, they yep. redid that one to a movie. So I think it'd be great. And also for Broadway, Tina Fey talked about bringing mean girls to Broadway. I could do that. Regina King, love it. But she, I didn't know she wrote that. Yes. Oh, my God. I don't you remember the Saturday Night Live where Lindsay Lohan came back and Tina Fey was kind of talking to her about getting in trouble and things like that? Oh, God, uh, brilliant I, movie. I, I don't remember that. Oh, God, well. But yeah, but it's a great movie, but I did not know she wrote that movie. I had no idea. Um, how many of you guys hockey fans, baseball fans? Stanley Cup playoffs going on right now. I know my girl just went to the Islanders-Panthers game last night. Go Cats. Um... I know you weren't happy about that. So, big talk right yes, now. Yes, Shilly, you're an Islanders fan. Sorry. Sorry. What? Series is tied, right? You're fine. You're fine. All right. Do or do not. They're talking about this article right here about the different hair trends that athletes, particularly this article is talking about the Washington Nationals, the hair trends that guys are doing, baseball players. And, of course, you know, some guys are clean shaven. Some guys have the beard. Some guys have the long hair. I know Bryce Harper is on the team. Kind of has like a... A coif. Excuse me. God bless you. And then a coif. Don't call that a coif when it's like. I've never heard uh, that word. I'll like. Quaff. You never quaff? <laughs> but you know the one. Depends on what part of the country you're on and what you call it, okay? I'm from the South. It's a coif to me. I've never heard that in my life. I just have a weave. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, but you know what's interesting? NFL never gets into the whole scene with the facial. Well, NFL or the guys hair. get into the, the dreadlocks. And the um, stuff like that, which I never understood how comfortable it could be to have your helmet with all that hair. And it's always the guys who are like down south mm -hmm. where it's really hot with yeah. dreadlocks. I'm like, I would pass out just from the weight of it. And you can grab it. I know. It's legal to grab somebody and take them down by the dreadlocks. I did a college football game years ago where a guy did get tackled by his dreadlocks. And then I found it on the field. So literally, no, it was like pulled out of his head and held it up. Like DNA evidence all over the place. I mean, geez. I was like, this is how hard the tackle was. It was insane. Yeah. But ladies, how do you like your guy? Do you like him clean shaven? Do you like a little scrap situation? See, I don't. Oh, we got I a little, little right there. Oh, hi. Yeah, kellymichaelnown.com. How do you prefer your man? What is winning? Clean um, shaven. Clean shaven. Yeah. Scruffy's in a, a I like second. a scruffy situation. And full beard is 8%, and that's just the, the vote from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> is usually pretty scruffy and after the playoffs you know they do a little they do the shave where they take the beard off oh, yeah. this is him in 2014 oh, that's wow. a full three months of the playoff beard and let me tell you that thing was very smelly um, so did he did he not touch it for no, three months that's like the tradition obviously in the nhl you don't touch it then and it's interesting because it's like i didn't know you were a redhead and he's like i'm not a redhead but then you start seeing pieces of amber in there no you know what i have red hair in my beard why do you guys get red in their beard um, because we're irish <laughs> it's weird but anyways back to the scruffy look at me tom i feel like when guys fully shave their beard i start you start thinking, wow, I, I didn't know your nose was shaped like that. Well, you know, I my, didn't know your cheeks were that full. Let's grow the beer bat. My dad had a big mustache. My dad's mustache looked like Steve Harvey before Steve Harvey. I mean, <laughs> my dad's mustache would grow. It, that thing was huge. Does he and still then, have one? No, no, no. He finally sh he shaved his mustache. And I remember I was about 13 years old. And we came home and laughed at him every time we looked at him because we weren't used to seeing him without the hair. And it wasn't that he, he just looked like he was walking around like that the whole day. <laughs> Why are y'all laughing? What's so funny? Right. What's not going on? I'm like, release your lip. Let your lip relax, man. It's like he was trying to cover his teeth and the whole time. But now I'm so used to it without the mustache. But boy, at one point, it was like, Dad, what did you do to the family? My dad's had one since I was born. He still does. And I look exactly like him when I have a mustache. This is exactly what my dad looks like. He has one. Mr. I, Andrews. Yes. 
Clark it, Griswold, we love you. Oh, boy. And um, how many um, people out here use, um, when you drink milk, what kind of milk do you drink if when you do drink some milk? I drink fat-free, like nothing in it, and I pray that it hasn't expired. <laughs> That's seriously a true story. We never get to the grocery store. It's embarrassing. And the other bad part is we try to buy the smallest amount of milk, and we only drink like that this much. much out of it. Yeah, but you know what? If you're going to drink milk, researchers did, did this whole study with this surprised me because even in like coffee I would do um, like two percent or I would do um, half oh and no. half what are you gonna tell or me? in cereal I would get the, you know the low fat or whatever yeah. it may be they're saying that there's no difference among rates of cardiovascular cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes between full fat and low fat dairy eaters. are you insane so Have they're you saying two percent actually two percent if you go whole milk whole milk those people have lost are, are slimmer they found maybe because yeah. they're puking because it's so heavy. <laughs> no. and i'm telling you what our own michael gelman is a testament to that he is swelled and he said i've been drinking whole yeah. milk forever you drink, whole, drink milk. whole milk oh I love whole milk isn't yeah. that just really filling no it feels great yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's two coffee. different words, feeling and feeling. <laughs> she says, is it really feeling? feeling. You go, no, yeah, it feels, it feels great. great. It feels I mean, that's totally great. different, no, different really way about it. I'm, so now I'm adopting your thing. I'm drinking whole milk. I'm yeah. drinking it all. Just give that's it all process. to me. Why there waste my time? There has to be a reason. Why are you losing weight with whole milk? Not, sometimes that skim milk tastes like you're drinking dirty water. Yeah. I mean, anybody ever looked at this, like, try to eat cereal with skim milk, and you're like, what am I doing this for? This is just yeah, bad. Process. Yeah. I think the fat slows down maybe the digestion. You know? and, and I wish I, I need a cow. I want to milk a cow. Well, are you insane? No, Do you I'm know not, how dangerous I'm that not is? Milk a, how Have you ever done to it? Milk a cow? Because they can kick you. You could get I'm squirted under the cow, in the, in the front of the cow. Unless that cow's got, like, some karate chop, they can't kick me. <laughs> I know how to milk a cow. I'm not, I'm not going to lie here. I don't eat grape nuts. For I used to love grape nuts, but I would pour a ton of sugar on top of it. I liked how crunchy they were. But if I put whole milk on the kind of cereal I eat, which is Frosted Flakes or Honey Nut Cheerios, See, I'm a Frosted that's Flake fine. guy. That's just going to be a lot of business in my mouth. <laughs> whole milk. <laughs> so what else has been going on here? No, I'm kidding. We got a big show today. Yeah. Too soon, that's all I'm gonna say. Holy too smoke. Soon, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Let's stop talking about milk. All right, everybody, we have a big show today from a Y50. Daniel Day Kim is here. that can help save your life, not including whole milk. Yes. Some of these medical things that we're talking about are really fascinating. I can't wait. And I'm obsessed and I diagnose myself with every problem, every disease, every rash, so he's going to have his handful. Well, you're going to like this. Dr. Agus is amazing. Love he's going to tell us all these things that really surprised me. And cover up your drink. Okay. Are you, are you ready, my dear? Ready. You think so? I have a good feeling you're ready. Hey, let's kick this nice day off with our happy dance travel trivia. <laughs> Ready. You were more than ready, and all the way, all the way from Middletown, New Jersey. That is <laughs> Donna Forte, everybody. Yeah. Well done, and well done, Donna. And um, let's say hello to Katie Stenkunis from East Greenville, Pennsylvania. Hello, Katie. How are you? Hi, Aaron. Hi, Michael. Hi. Hey. We're looking for. Oh, there you are in the picture. How cute. Oh, so, oh, you're pregnant in the picture. I was, yes. Oh. When did you have your baby? I did, six weeks ago. Oh, good. Oh, congratulations. How are That's you awesome. feeling? I feel great. You're doing great. Did you have a little boy or a little girl? I had uh, my, number thir or my number three little boy. Oh. And the name is? Eli. Oh, Eli. I love that. You a Giants fan? <laughs> I, I actually don't watch football. 
What's that? She doesn't watch football. I actually don't watch football. All right. Well, still a nice name. Good your gift you. basket from me is on the way since now you had the baby and you didn't make me guess about it earlier. And you'll be getting a re-gifted bottle of tequila. Yeah. That's right. All right. Let's see what you're playing for, Katie. Thank you. Playing for the Club Barbados, seven days, six nights in an ocean front room, all inclusive. This trip is provided in part by mm -hmm, Hotels.com, $8,300 value. You have 20 seconds and only one guess. All right, Katie, you ready? Yes. Yeah. All right, here we go. On yesterday's show, I talked to Von Miller. Cutie. What did Von Miller say he majored in in college? He majored in poultry. You got it. Yeah. Congratulations, you and a guest will enjoy seven days and six nights at the Club Barbados Resort and Spa. The Club Barbados Resort and Spa offers an idyllic waterfront setting with sweeping views of the turquoise Caribbean Sea on the island's famous west coast. Guests can be as active or as relaxed as they please with all-inclusive offerings such as water sports, tennis, a fitness center, freshwater swimming pools, three bars, gourmet dining, and more. Your prize is valued at approximately $8,300. He calls it poetry. He says it sounds poetry. a lot like when you say poetry. It's well, hilarious. he's from down south. Yep. He's from his poetry. But I didn't know you could major in chicken. I just had no <laughs> idea. Well, he's done well. All right, congratulations, Katie. Now you can help a lucky member of our studio audience receive a $500 gift certificate from Crate and Barrel. Please pick a number between 1 and 218. Well, since I'm a mom of three boys, I pick the number three, please. Looks like he needs to go to Crazy Barrel. Congratulations, Sir Katie. Congratulations to you. Everybody stay right there. When we come back, Daniel Day Kim will be here with us. Still ahead on live, we continue to take charge of your health week with a look at medical breakthroughs that can save your life. Nice to meet you, too. Fabulous. And I've got to say, man, who is luckier than I you? Know. Every show that you've done over the last 12 years has been based out of Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I can't really complain about that, can I? Yes, I mean, six <laughs> seasons of Lost, six seasons of Hawaii Five O, and now you got picked up for a seven. That's right. Thank that's goodness. Right. So you don't have to leave. That's right. That's right. What happens when this is over? I mean, where do you want to go next? You got to uh, stay in Hawaii. Oh, mm -hmm. And you have a love interest this season. Yeah, that's kind of new. Well, uh, you know, my character had uh, a... Oh, look at that. Uh, my character oh, had shirtless, a... Shirtless, shirtless. Uh, oh, that's the beautiful and talented Julie Benz there. Uh, and uh, we uh, have had a lot of fun working on the show. My character's been very serious with a lot of drama in his storyline. And to have someone uh, come along and to kind of lighten him up a little has been really nice. Well, I'm sure. Well, what is it like, though? I mean, love interest on these, is, do you like that? I mean, I'm watching with your shirt off. Yeah, I'm, we, I'm pretty sure can they we roll said, that again? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's do a replay. <laughs> but, but, um, is it, but it's something, like you said, something new for your character. And is it a different dynamic, though, for, for, for you, dealing with Julie and, and a different storyline, not so serious as... He wants to know what the makeout time. scenes are like for you. How <laughs> the, the, awkward <laughs> is it? How great is it filming it in Hawaii? Tell us everything. It's all good. It's all, it's all good. Julie's great. No, no, it's, uh, you know, it's nice to kind of have that, that, that lighter stuff and mm -hmm. some comic yeah. moments in this season that my character hasn't had to play and so uh, you know it's always nice when you're doing a show for six seasons now to have a change of pace to yeah different colors come in and, yep. and so it's it's a lot of fun but what's been awesome though we've done some throwbacks here and I saw a throwback of your family and we have you, you as a baby with your mother and father your parents are gorgeous wow thank you very much Beautiful. do you remember Thanks, uh, where do you know where yeah, yeah. What you, what's the story behind it? Uh, I don't personally remember well, this, yeah, but, I get my, that. <laughs> but uh, this was right after my parents uh, immigrated to the United States, oh, wow. and I was a little over one year old. And um, you know, I was just thinking when I took that photo, uh, when, when I posted that photo, I was just thinking about all that my parents had had been through to mm -hmm. kind of uh, call America their home. And uh, I just wanted to to say thanks for Aww. what they suffered through, and and I wanted to say thanks to America because 
this is where I've been able to uh, make my living and, and call my home. Awesome. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm so excited for you because you are, you are doing one of the, the ch most challenging things, but I think probably one of the most fulfilling things for an actor with a live feedback audience. You are going to take over and play the king and the king and I. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm super excited about yeah. it. I actually started my career here in New York. I went to, to school for acting here at NYU, just downtown, and so, uh, thank you. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been nice to be able to come back after so many years on television, mm -hmm. to come back and do some theater, and especially with a show like this one. It's, uh, you know, Bart Scher is doing a great job, uh, you know, with the direction, and, and I'm working with uh, the wonderful Marin Maisie. Those yes. of you who follow Broadway will know her mm -hmm. uh, quite Maybe. well. Uh, now, but it, this is your Broadway debut. It is. You know, I, I have to say that when I was a struggling, broke young actor uh, living downtown, I used to say that, you know, someday, if I ever make it big, I'll be at Lincoln Center. And I guess some days there. now. Yeah. But wait, so you decided not to shave your head for this part, right? Because there are characters that have played with shaved head, right? Yeah, you know, uh, Yul Brynner, of course, yes. who is iconic in the role, uh, had a shaved head, so most people think that the, the king uh, should have a shaved head, but in fact, the king, who this uh, character is based on, had hair. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> and so, uh, Thank it was... Goodness. <laughs> right? You're like, woo! <laughs> exactly. I don't know how my character uh, on Five O would explain the bald yeah. head. All this <laughs> way, but, uh, but no, it's nice because, uh, you know, he, Yul Brynner was so iconic that people associate you know, his characteristics yeah. with the, the king's characteristics. Well, you know what? You're, you're following big shoes. No doubt you can fill them, man. Oh, no thank doubt. You, man. So oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Daniel yeah. Day Kim, he joined the production of The King and I starting May 3rd at the Lincoln Center Theater right here in New York City. So make sure you go check that out, everybody. leading physicians whose latest book, The Lucky Years, is a fascinating guide to extending your life through amazing new medical breakthroughs. Please welcome Dr. David Agus. Nice to meet you. Thank you, guys. So, yeah, you call it personalized medicine. So what, is, what does that mean? It's the right drug for the right patient at the right time. You know, you go to a doctor and they give you a one-size-fits-all prescription. Yeah. It makes no sense. Uh -huh. Today's world, you can spit it into a tube, and literally overnight, we can look at your genes to know how you metabolize drugs. Mm -hmm. So we can give the right drug. We can be able to dose it up or down depending on how you metabolize it, and it's transformative. Cancer, it's even wilder, is that literally when a patient sees me, Overnight, I can look at the DNA, you know the on and the off switches, and give them a drug to turn them off. And so it's a whole new era in treatment instead of carpet bombing the body, targeting the disease. And big one, everybody is wondering and wants to get a hold of weight loss. How could this help with weight loss? This is the wildest. So get a load of this. And so an invest, a, a researcher used artificial sweeteners, right? Because when they came out, they were the mm -hmm. perfect food. Yeah. They hit your sweet tooth and they weren't absorbed, so zero calories. Well, they gave it to 20-year-olds for two weeks. Every single one of them had diabetes markers in the blood. They said, that's interesting. Then they gave them antibiotics, followed by the artificial sweeteners. No diabetes. Huh. What they did was they changed the bacteria in the GI tract to push you to diabetes. Yes. That's why they didn't work with weight loss ever in any trial. And so much so that if you take these bacteria from a fat human and put it in a skinny mouse, it becomes fat. And the, obverse, the ob uh, uh, opposite is true also. There are tenfold more bacteria in you guys than human cells. So they control our metabolism. They're an enormous part to us. And all of a sudden, they're going to be part of our treatments going forward. Hmm. So if you have diabetes mm -hmm. or you're obese, we can actually give you bacteria to change that. Hmm. Oh, wow. And, and when is that going to happen? Amazing. It's happening now. Okay. I mean, I, just, I need to know that just, you know, from my own But it doesn't give you a free future. will to eat anything you no, want. You no, still no. got to do the right things, right, but it's going to help. You ruined it for me, Doc. Oh, all come right. on. <laughs> but you know what? One, one thing I was excited about when I was reading about this, I said this, this could really help so many people. Cancer fighting breakthroughs. Please. It's amazing. You know, a year ago, Jimmy Carter gets up and he goes, you know, I have melanoma that went to my brain. And he was a hero for being uh -huh. transparent and telling the world about his issues. That, look at this. Whoa. Kind of wild. Yeah, we, we, we go very, all uh, These cells are going to attack me. And so he was given a drug that blocked the <laughs> don't eat me signal on his cancer. And then three weeks ago, he said, at 92... I am cancer-free, and I've stopped treatment. 
Wow. And so it's a new era. For the first time ever, I can walk into a patient's room with real hope, with personalized medicine, and with this we call immune therapy, and they are bringing better and longer lives to many people. They're on the market today. Please, oh, we awesome. need this Yeah, news. that is really awesome. And you know, but, how does it work? Yeah. How, how do you get this to work? And can we do this now, all of this now? Please. Yes, I mean, so they work in lung cancers. It works yeah. in certain kinds of uh, skin cancers. It works in certain kinds of kidney cancers, and literally more and more cancers all the time. Cancer cells are born with a don't eat me signal. And by blocking that don't eat me signal, it allows your own immune system to come in and take care of the cancer. So no toxic drugs, no chemotherapy, just basic allowing your immune system to do its job. Wow, that's really amazing. And another, another thing was reverse aging. Oh, this is wild. And this but, is almost science fiction, but no, it's... I'm not, you're not going to look... I, I, physically, I'm not going to become my Benjamin Button, am I? <laughs> Potentially. I would love to look like I'm 26. Is that possible? Yes. Well, no. But what, what we're mean? possible is we can live longer and better without these diseases. Yeah. So this woman, Wanda Ruth Lundford, in the 1950s, published her only paper, and she was actually kicked out of science. She took an old mouse and a young mouse, and she put them to sleep, and she tied their skin together. So after a day, their Hold blood on. supplies mouse, joined. Mouse, tied their skin together. So their blood supplies joined. And then she oh. looked three weeks later, and that old mouse, the gray hair had turned brown. The heart beat stronger. The muscles were bigger. There were new neurons growing in the brain. She claimed she reversed aging. People called her crazy, Frankenstein, Dracula, and she was pushed out of science. Last year, Harvard, Stanford, and UCSF repeated the experiment, and it worked. And what they showed is at age 25, our stem cells go to sleep. And there now are proteins that can turn them back on. And when you turn them back on, an elderly, hopefully bones heal quicker when you break them. Alzheimer's, maybe we can grow new neurons. But we can allow us to live a long life without all the problems of aging. Well, how so do if I, you tie me to Gigi Hadid, I, I could look. <laughs> is that really what could happen? <laughs> yeah, right. I was just wondering. I see some young people in the audience Get here. Over we here. can uh, Let's find some rope. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're going to come back, and I want to know when we come back how they turn that on. Like you said, they go to sleep, they yeah. turn it back on. And we're also going to talk about a wonder drug that is already in your medicine cabinet. So stay right there. We'll be right back with Dr. David Agus, okay? Live's Take Charge of Your Health Week is presented by Insure. New patented Insure and Live has HMB plus 20 grams of high-quality protein to help rebuild muscle and give you the strength and energy to keep doing what you love. Visit Live's website to learn more. Next live, Julia Louis-Dreyfus. I'm a big fan, so I'm sitting here like all giggly. We are back with Dr. David Agus, and um, I wanted to ask you, talk about advancement in medicine, and you talked about turning off that gene at 25. How do you turn it back on really quick? <laughs> so... There are proteins that tell these stem cells, don't go to sleep anymore, wake up and start to do your job like you were doing with a kid. You know a kid breaks their arm when they fall off a bicycle? They heal literally in a week or two. Yeah. And we break our arm, it takes months. Mm -hmm. So it allows our body to behave like when we're children. And so they're in what we call clinical trials now, they're being tested. But going forward, this is going to be how we treat diseases. Instead of these big medicines, we're going to allow our body to do its job. All right, let's talk wonder drugs. Yes. What are they? It's a pretty wild thing is that 2,400 years ago, this guy named Hippocrates said, you take the bark of the willow tree and chew it and pain and fever go away. And what he discovered was a drug that blocks not the incidence, but the death rate of cancer by 30%. Heart disease by 22% and stroke by 17%. This pill costs about $3 a year. It's called a baby aspirin. So over the age of 40, baby aspirin is a staggering drug to prevent heart disease right, yep. and cancer, and it works. It ain't sexy, doesn't have the greatest marketing in the world, but it's a real one. The other one is So should we be taking an aspirin a day, like a glass of wine, or what? I mean, tell me what's the... I mean, that's my philosophy. I believe in but wine. So there's certainly a benefit to some alcohol, so and uh, we're ready. Do you have here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but so an aspirin, should we take one a day or what? It's, you know, it's a discussion to have with your doctor. Okay. There are some risks. You can get a little bit of bleeding, can upset your stomach. Mm -hmm. But if you have a family history of heart disease and cancer mm -hmm. and you're worried about it, you can be in charge of your own health. And here's a way where you can really have an impact. So have that conversation. Your doctor doesn't make your decisions. You and he or she do together. Okay. The yeah. other drug is a wild one. It's called statins, the Lipitor, the Crestors. And this was a drug to lower cholesterol, but it turns out it blocks inflammation. Mm -hmm. So if you have a normal cholesterol, 
cholesterol. It lowers heart disease and cancer risk. So again, two dramatic drugs, inexpensive, Lipitor without health insurance for 90 days cost $9. Oh, wow. wow. And, you know, aspirin costs $3, $4. Yeah. So these are inexpensive and they work. It's hard to treat disease. It's easier to prevent them. And what else, what else, Doc, can we do? Is there anything else out there you'd like to... I want you out? to know yourself, right? To me, the key is knowing yourself. So what it means is you check your blood pressure at home. Mm -hmm. What it means is you do a test. There's a simple test to do about your musculoskeletal strength. Are you guys ready? It's going to be hard for you, Aaron, to I'm address. I'm going to make but Michael, straight do here, this. Here, sit with me on the floor. Just sit cross-legged on the floor. I'll have an aspirin and a wine. Doc, I already <laughs> can't do this test because I can't sit like that. My hips... <laughs> All right. So if you can get up with one hand or no hands, it puts you in the top 70% of musculoskeletal strength. As simple as that. So just to go like this, and can you get up like that? All right. Oh. What about a downward dog? What does that mean? Good. And so right there, but I want you to... What is that telling me about myself? So you're in the top 70% of musculoskeletal strength. If you can't do that, you gotta work on that. But I want you to keep a record of what you eat when you eat. You know, when you eat, it's just as important as what you eat. People who graze, that is just grab an apple here or a peanut here, That's they bad. have a much higher rate of diabetes. Because really? insulin's always up. So your body was developed. You know, kitchen cabinets with food are only an invention of the last hundred years. Uh -huh. So we were developed to have our meal. Do you mind if I sit? I would Amazon love you to. Thank yeah. you. Are you going to sit with one hand or two? <laughs> what does that mean about your muscular strength, sir? <laughs> but we were made to have our meals and nothing in between. So athletes perform better when they sleep on a regular schedule and when they exercise on a regular schedule. And by the way, our kids will too. You want your kid to do the best they can, have mm -hmm. them go to bed the same time and get up the same and eat their meals. Why are you giving me a meal? No, I'm just saying there's a lot of moms out there that don't get to sleep a lot. We travel a lot. I mean, what happens if your sleep schedule is kind of erratic? What's it's the best rough. thing to do? As much as you can, try to be in charge of your when you eat. Okay. Um, if you travel a lot, you know, say, am I going to go into their time zone or mm -hmm. stay on my time mm -hmm. zone? As much as possible, focus on it. Obviously, okay. you can't be crazy religious about things, but as much as you can. If a baseball player changes one time zone, their batting yeah. average goes yeah. down. Two time zones, it goes more. Wow. Three, even more. Wow. And so athletes pay attention to it. When they pay attention, so do we. Mm -hmm. and, and, get, and just moving, I'm sure, is very important. That's Not sitting too long. And if you are, get up and take a little break in between and just get some, act, some blood flow. Yeah, just I love it saying to an audience office. that's sitting down. But they're, they're, yeah, they're, but they're sitting for an hour, and they were jogging before they sat right. down. So they're and good standing shape. in a long line. So get a load of this, is that sitting for five hours a day is equivalent on a health basis as smoking a pack and a quarter of cigarettes. What? what? Sitting for five hours is the same to your health as smoking wow. a pack and a quarter of cigarettes. Five hours straight. Sitting five hours. Okay. And so the key is we were designed to move. And it doesn't mean you got to go run and get your heart rate up and get sweaty. You just got to walk. When you walk, your muscles move and make your lymphatics work. And so the thing about our society that's so weird is, right, the richer you are, the more bathrooms in your house. So you don't have to walk room to room to go to the bathroom. The more important you are in a company, the closer your parking space is to your desk. We got to change that. Yeah. You know, get up every hour, just go for a five minute walk. You know, I was privileged to care for Steve Jobs. And Steve mm -hmm. told me, you know, we'll go for a walk. There are two reasons, David. He goes, the health reason, obviously. But he said, if you go for a walk with someone and you know when you're going to turn left and right and they don't, and you're in a business negotiation, it gives you an advantage. Ooh. <laughs> wow. So he thought about all the different angles on it. But the health ramifications are clear. You know, we design buildings based on the environment, LEED certification and all that. Who's designing a building based on health? We need to. Don't have a printer in your office. Go to the other side to print something. Really re-engineer your life to show how much more you can walk. You know what? I love it. Those are, those are small things that you can change. Yeah. Things yeah. you can change every day. And, and Doc, thank you for thank your you time, so man. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And Doc's book, The Lucky Years, is available now. Make sure you go out and get the book by Dr. David Agus. Doc, thank you, Sonny. What do you, you have, have over there, inbox. EA? Well, people love the conversation about the old cow and milking it. Heidi in Connecticut said, Michael, you might be able to lift the cow off the ground, but she indeed can kick you, and they often will. I knew that. Well, they can kick forward. Okay. Kevin, you can't bring me a cow right now and we can't try? Well, this I mean, what kind of show is this? Well, my lady Marjolene Vanderhoof from Michigan said, Cow, Michael, I hereby invite you to our dairy farm where we can teach you how to milk some cows. Yeah. Let's do this. We said, yeah. I would love it. All right, Karen from Augusta, Georgia, Bugs. 
What's the last thing that goes through a bug's mind when it hits your windshield? Um. Their butts. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Jillian De Antremont from Halifax, Nova Scotia said, mirrors on the plane. Aaron, I'm a flight attendant. The lavatory mirrors are the best place to pluck your eyebrows. Yes. I ah. thought she was going to say they're the dirtiest things on the plane because I was like all up in it. Yeah. Um, and then finally, we talked about how it's the Queen's 90th birthday. We were talking about what do you give for birthday gifts. You could give the Queen a Chippendales dance performance. <laughs> You know what? Happy birthday. I'll pull out some of that magic mic on oh, the yeah. queen. All right, there you go. Okay. I'm going to see you like it, though. Everybody stay right there. We'll be right back. If you'd like to know more about anything you see... What, what do you get every somebody who has everything? And Mark Hoyler from Eckerton, Ohio said, as a gift, you get the person who has everything shelves so they can put it all on the shelf. Right. I like if that. I get shelves, I'm going to be annoyed.